Chorus Voices, the podcast brought to you by Chorus, a fresh approach to community service. Settle in, listen in, and enjoy the voices who bring you reflections, musings, and stories from our community. Hello and welcome to Chorus Voices. I'm Lou Forster, Head of Brand and People here at Chorus. I'm hosting on my own today because the most important chorus voices are going to be our peers out in the community who are working with those on the mental health recovery journey. October is Mental Health Month and in that is uh, WA's Mental Health Week and the um, catchphrase for this year's Mental Health Week is that mental health starts where we live, learn, work and play which is really um, key for Chorus. We're helping people in the community and finding employment and a meaningful place. So let's hear from some of our colleagues about the work they do walking alongside people on the mental health recovery journey. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a mental health worker. Excellent. Thanks for coming and chatting, Emily. What does um, a week look like in your role? Every week's different, to be honest. It really depends on the day and, yeah, who you're working with and where they're at, (laughs) to be perfectly honest. So, yeah, every week's different. No day's the same. So very much about uh, the journey of somebody who's recovering. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, and it's always, you know, um, like, for example, yesterday, uh, a lady that I was working with was really good. Today that person's in crisis, so it's really every day is different. No two days are the same. How do you um, how do you adapt your working style to someone's changing um, days? I guess and how they're going. Um, well, you have to be flexible. You have to um, be able to, I guess, be fluid to people's changing needs and be able to. Um, manage your time, be able to reorganise things and adapt to um, if someone's suddenly in crisis you might need to reschedule things, move things around uh, because someone might need um, a lot more support and then you might have to reschedule other people to give someone else the support that they need right then. Do you think you pull on different skills when someone's in a different place emotionally? Like Um, more skills? Yeah, I think it's just, um, you just learn to be, yeah, flexible and adapt the way you work to where people are at that time. And um, how do you look after yourself? Because it, you know, I haven't done much of this work and it sounds like, it, you know, a day supporting someone in crisis could be a hard day for you as well. You have to learn to have good self-care. I think that's a very important thing in this job. If you don't have good self-care... Um, you probably won't last very long. You're going to get burnt out very quick, very easily. So that's something that's really important to you to look after yourself. Yeah. 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 What do you enjoy so, about the work you do? Um, I find it a privilege, really, being able to share people's journey. And to me, I think it's a, a big trust thing on behalf of the other people. So quite often it's a big thing for them to to build that trust and let you in um so i always honor that i think it's you know i i take it that it's a an honor for them to let you in allow you to walk alongside and share that journey with them seeing them achieve what it is they want to achieve for me that's what i enjoy i've really got that from a lot of um our colleagues who work in in this space that it's that walking alongside I've got this mental image because I hear that so often and it, mm. it's such a beautiful um, uh, equal um, image it's yeah. not necessarily us as the expert or the professional it's just a, another human being mm. well that's right it's it's you know it's never it's not about you it's it's about them and it's not it's not your journey, it's it's their journey and and it's really about giving them the tools and the strategies and you know, that they can take away to continue to use in their life to 
to maintain that wildness and continue yeah, achieving what it is they want to achieve. Okay, hi, my name's Tony. Um, I'm a peer support mental health recovery worker. Cool. So what does a peer support mental health work- recovery worker do, Tony? Many things. Many things. Most of it, I think, I, I support most of the recovery workers. Um, my, my life skills is to help them as well along their way um, so they don't feel like they're, um, they're by, by themselves, that they're not alone. Um, can of imagine that as walking alongside, is that...? Yeah, right? basically, yes, walking alongside them and, and saying that there's a better place, you know, that we can get there. Um, sometimes it's, uh, it is hard for them. Uh, they don't understand that uh, the recovery is a slow process. Um, it's not always quick. And, uh, yeah. So what might um, an engagement you know, or a partnership with someone look like? You know, how might they find out about the support that you can offer through your role and, and what might that kind of journey look like? Well, what I do is when I, when I, when I first introduce myself, I, uh, I let them know that my role is, is a peer support, not, not fully as a recovery, but as peer support I'm there to, um, to more or less mentor them. Um, not as much as the recovery workers do. Um, I think mainly um, my role is that um, they've got a friendly face they can talk to. Um, I let them know. I, I ask them if they've got any questions they want to ask about my life. I don't mind telling them um, what I've been through and what sort of things that I've done. Um, some of the things uh, you know, like depression, anxiety. Um, I, I suffer from that, unfortunately, that uh, that's an ongoing thing with me. Um, so that's part of my life and I've got to learn to live with that it's, and, and I think a lot of them have to learn to live with some of their um, um, mental health issues that they've got that mostly end up staying with them for the rest of their time so yeah and, and I think sometimes that, that um, understanding of what recovery is is interesting isn't it some people kind of assume that it means I don't know um, Perfection or back to where you were, but really, it's just it's a it's just a journey, isn't it? And a state of mind. Like, how would you describe recovery? I think sometimes it's a state of mind. We are um, because it can be difficult. Um, I still sometimes I can fall into a rut, and I've got to dig myself out sometimes. Um, and um, yeah, I, I can understand how they sometimes they, they do fall over, and um, you just got to help them sort of find that they you know that. It's only a rut. It's only like a speed bump. Mm. And they can get back over it again. Maybe that's it. Oh, I like that because a journey has got a real kind of analogy, isn't it, of, yeah. of travelling and a speed bump or a rut. It's kind of, you can picture that it's just a small part. Of yeah, the journey. yeah no, you can fall into those little gaps and holes and and you've got to, you know, sometimes it's, you feel like you're clawing your way out, but really you're not. It's just that if you've got that support around you, it's a, a, lot, a lot better. And I find that with where I work here, um, with the guys around me, I have heaps of support, which is great. Mm. Do you think um, sharing your experiences with people that use our services like, um, adds to trust? Yes, it gives you a better report too, and they feel a bit more relaxed with you. And they can sometimes tell you let you, I suppose, let you admit more, um, tell about their own life stories. And, um, and some of them do have a, a very difficult time. Mm. And, um, but it's good to see that um, the ones that uh, do get back on track, they, you know, you see them around town, they're happy and they're getting along with their lives and it's really, really great to see that. Is that, is that a rewarding part of your job? That's a reporting part of my job. And then I look at it and I go, oh, I've done something wrong for a change. <laughs> And I feel better within myself as well, and I, I find that um, that can be um, satisfying. Yes. I'm Trish. I've been working with First Community First and now Chorus for a total of seven years. Um, I was initially with Personal Helpers and Mentors as a um, mental health recovery worker, and now I'm a support facilitator with Partners in Recovery. Mm. I just love my job. I work with people with severe and persistent mental illness and complex needs and I love the variety of the people that I work with and the different issues and I do a lot of networking with my job and I love networking. What sorts of things happen as a result of networking? Well, you often can provide better services 
for your participants because you know exactly who to refer them to, exactly what the people do, and there's already a working relationship yourself with the um, agencies and the individual workers. So it makes it an easy transition with the participants mm. and linking them and, you know, a- advocating, mm. providing advocacy on their behalf. And I find it really, really helpful um, because I'm a social worker by trade and I'm um, just using my social work skills. I know I don't do therapy or counselling and I must admit I do miss that because I have done it in past life, in past jobs, but obviously I use a lot of counselling skills and that's really, really helpful working with people. Yeah, mm. and I'm, yeah, I'm pleased because, no, it sounds like I'm sort of blowing my bugle, but I get really high, I've got a high um, rapport rate with clients and this with people who often fall through the cracks as well. Mm. And, um, yeah, just gently, and it's different. You go at different pace with different people, sort of linking them with services and helping them with the service and having care coordination meetings, which is... Which that's is with good too. other people who are supporting an individual yeah, on their journey. Yeah, yeah, and you can have the care coordinations on different sides. Sometimes I've had quite a few agencies around a table, like eight, ten. Wow. Um, other times it's working like lots of mini smaller ones, particularly with people with mental health issues that would find that whole table approach perhaps just too terrifying. So does the individual often attend those those yeah, meetings? Oh, yes, yeah. because a lot of the people, um, a lot of it's related services with, with mental health, and I can also be working with those services beforehand and and sort of working on the individual workers as well to, to make it a sort of a less threatening presence for the person. Mm-hmm. And the person certainly has a voice. They're very important because it's all about them. So the per- person realises it. Say the person's name is Joe. They realise it's Team Joe. This is their team. They're backing for them and really just trying to make their recovery journey as smooth as possible. That's a really nice yeah. analogy. I really like that. I've got this mm. image in image in my head, and I guess it's like almost like a hospital meeting room in my head and it's a really um, hard uh, thing for me to visualise because I just I have never been in the meeting like that with so many professionals and individuals yeah. I love that analogy Team Joe that yeah. then immediately yeah. makes me feel comfortable yeah. and I think um, language is so important and I find yeah. the mental health um, sector are really aware of that that it's very um, egalitarian word it's like you know partners peers yeah. walk alongside yeah um, that's right this person's an equal and basically mental health can happen to anyone and I think everyone has had someone in their life whether it's a family member a friend um, even a long distant yeah relative who they haven't met who's who's been touched by mental mental illness and sometimes it can just be circumstances in life and there's too many bricks and that final brick will make someone crumble yeah Mm -hmm. I mean there's often a multitude of reasons I also have a holistic background I've got a master's in public health with majors in addiction studies and health promotion so I'm really into building people's resilience and and also promotion because I'm on different um, network meetings as well and one of them's the health promotion one and also the alcohol and other drugs um, meeting group at Palmerston to look at how we can perhaps change the culture in the community mm. and you know and also building resilience with individual participants as well. So with all that education sounds like you're a bit of a lifelong learner Trish. Oh definitely yeah. <laughs> So hi Ryan, thanks for having me down in Albany. So um, you've had a uh, early, early-ish start this morning. You've already been out yep. to see a customer, um, and then back in the office. Is that a typical day for you? Um, it can be. Yep, uh, we do that a couple of times a week, where we offer sort of transport combined with social support for a customer, um, just to assist them in able, in able to enable them to get on with their vocational studies and whatnot. So. Great. Yeah. So Ryan, you're a, a recovery worker with me- people with mental health or on the mental health recovery journey. Mm. What does a, a role like that look like in a week? The mental health recovery role is diverse and it 
it depends on what the individual's sort of looking for in their recovery journey. So a typical week could be out walking with someone because they're working on fitness. It could be budgeting with someone because they want to work on their budget. Um, Often it's obviously talking about the mental health and how that's affecting their lives and their families, uh, whether they've got children. Um, There are a host of reasons that people come for mental health recovery, uh, but generally it's to build on the skills that they need to recover um, and to look at skills that they can use in their lives that they can share with their families and carers as well. Mm. Um, so often it's, it's inclusive of other people around them as well because what a person can't recover in isolation. So a bit like the takes a community to, to you know, or a village. It takes to, a village to raise a child, that same sort of mentality yeah. is that you can't recover in isolation. You need people around you that are supportive, um, and so often we are linking in with other people and other agencies to encourage someone's wellness and, and build a really strong toolbox for them to draw from. So um, what do you like about your role? Uh, the diversity of the role. <laughs> so with uh, Chorus, we're given the opportunity to try many different things. Um, we're also given the flexibility to an autonomy to work with people in the way that they need us to work with them. Um, in about an hour's time, I'll be out walking on a beach <laughs> because nice. I'm working with someone who wants to work on their fitness and while we're walking, we're talking. Uh, we're not confined to an office space. Uh, we uh, have all of the resources in Albany at our disposal. Uh, we have great relationships with our other agencies. Um, and yeah, I think that just the flexibility and versatility to work with people where they're at and how they need us to. Well, I hope listeners have enjoyed hearing some of the experiences of our staff working with people on the road to mental well-being. I had a interesting experience today at work. Uh, I noticed that we had some colouring in for mental health uh, left at uh, locations, all of our chorus locations and kind of made me chuckle at first but then at lunchtime I pulled out one of the uh, sheets and the pencils and and did some colouring in and it really did make me feel quite calm so on this sheet it says that colouring in for mental health can help you uh, experience relief and enter a meditative state have less stress and anxiety let go of negative thoughts and achieve some mindfulness yeah, it was great. It was a, a nice opportunity. I didn't know those colouring in sheets were coming, but it was um, well received by me. So thanks to the team that left those out on sites. And I'll sign off for this episode of Chorus Voices and look forward to um, bringing next time's episode. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Chorus Voices, the podcast brought to you by Chorus. If you like our show and wanted to know more, check out our website at chorus.org.au and please leave a review. We'd love to hear your feedback and it helps others find us and enjoy the podcast as well. Join us next time for more inspiring stories and news from our community. Chorus, a fresh approach to community service.